All right, welcome to the lesson on rectangular coordinates. Our focus for today is going to be able to uh, find the distance between two points, and then we're also going to be able to find the midpoint of a line segment. All right, so I started uh, the lesson here with a picture to kind of help us uh, put the distance formula in perspective. I know you learned the distance formula in geometry, and we're just going to uh, study it a little bit more again. All right, so our focus is basically to find this length right here. Well, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little right triangle. And the purpose for doing that is so that we can use the idea of a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. Okay, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, which is what the distance formula is based on. All right, so when we do this, okay, notice that I have a new point here, and this is the point... 5 comma 3. Combine that with the other point over here of 2 comma 3 and our point up here at the top which is at 5 comma 7. Alright, so the length of A is equal to 5 minus 2 or A is equal to 3. Okay, the length of B is equal to a 7 minus 3 or a 4, okay? And so if I wanted to go and find the length of C, I am going to do uh, A squared plus B squared equal to C squared, okay? But to put this in terms of the distance formula, uh, I want you to understand that our A is 5 minus 2, so it's 5 minus 2 quantity squared plus our b, which is 7 minus 3 quantity squared, equal to c squared. Now, we don't need a c squared, we just need a plain old c. So how do I get a plain old c? I take the square root, and then I take the square root. Okay, so how does this play out in terms of the distance formula? Well, our distance formula is going to equal, d is equal to r, x2 minus x1 quantity squared, which is your 5 minus 2 are your 2x values. Notice 2 is an x value, 5 is an x value. And we subtracted to find the length of 3, and then we squared it. Then our b value, which was 7 minus 3, comes from y2 minus y1 quantity squared. Okay, and notice that 7 was a y value and 3 was a y value. Okay, so if we go back to, you know, the original question when it said find the distance between the two points, you know, uh, 2, 3, and 5, 7, uh, all we did was we subtracted our x values, subtracted our y values, and squared them, and then we go from there. All right, to finish the problem off, Okay, it looks like our distance is going to equal the square root of 5 minus 2 squared, which is 3 squared, 7 minus 3 squared, which is 4 squared, or d is equal to the square root of 9 plus 16. Remember, order of operations, we have to square first, then we're going to add, so d is equal to the square root of 25, and then I take the square root last, and our distance is 5. So... That's how we find the distance, okay? All right, let's uh, make sure we understand it, okay? So I put it in here in the box, okay? Here is our distance formula, and our first objective is to see if you understand it well enough to try it on your own. So there's your little stop sign. Try it, see what you come up with. All right, now that you've started the video again, let's check to see how you did. Okay, on the first one, okay, you should have ended up with a 7 minus 2 quantity squared plus 13 minus 1 quantity squared. D is equal to a 5 squared plus 12 squared. D is equal to the square root of 169 when you do 25 plus 144, or D is equal to 13. Right, hopefully you were uh, successful with that one. Okay, For the next one, uh, we should have ended up with d is equal to the square root of negative 1 minus 1 quantity squared plus 
uh, negative root 3 minus root 3 quantity squared. So d is equal to, it looks like, a negative 2 quantity squared plus a negative 2 root 3 quantity squared. All I have to do now is to square, and I get a 4. Don't forget when I go to square this, I have to square the 2 and get a 4, square the root 3, and I get a 3, so it looks like I get a 12, and therefore 4 plus 12 is 16, or my distance is equal to 4. Alright, moving on to the next page. Okay, uh, for this, okay, taking some, uh, you know, a simple concept with our distance formula and applying it to the idea of determining whether or not a triangle is isosceles. All right, reminder that in an isosceles triangle, we're looking for a situation in which two of the sides have the same length. So our objective here is to find the distance between, uh, you know, the first point and the second point, the first point and the third point, and then the second and the third point, and see if at least two of the distances are the same. So we're going to have to do the distance formula three times. So let's start with uh, the very first two points. So distance is equal to the square root of 7 minus 0 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. I get uh, 7 squared, which is 49. I get 2 squared, which is 4. So it looks like I got the square root of 49 plus 4, or 53. For the next one, I'm going to take the first and the last. So d is equal to the square root of, it looks like, 2 minus 0 squared plus negative 5 minus 2 squared, which is going to give me a 4, is going to give me a negative 7, negative 7 squared is 49, uh, plus my 4 also gives me the square root of 53, therefore two of the distances are the same. And therefore, I know I'm going to have an isosceles triangle. Okay, uh, just for the sake of argument, let's uh, at least do the last one. So d is equal to the square root of a 2 minus 7 squared plus a negative 5 minus 4 squared. All right, looks like this is going to be 25. This is going to be 81. Uh, 25 plus 81 gives us the square root of 106. All right, well, at least we know we don't have an equilateral triangle, but we did show that we have an isosceles triangle because two of the lengths are the same. All right, example four. Determine if the following triangle is a right triangle. So we already talked at the beginning. Uh, reminder that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. And that only works for right triangles and no other triangles. So this one's going to be um, just one extra step. After finding the lengths of the three sides, we're going to have to actually plug them into the Pythagorean theorem and see if we have a right triangle. All right, so we'll start with the first two points and find the distance. Distance is equal to a uh, 1 minus negative 8, which is a 1 plus 8 quantity squared, plus a negative 1 minus negative 2, which is plus 2 quantity squared. And it looks as though I get, what, 9 squared, which is 81, plus 1 squared, which is 1. So I've got the square root of 82 because of the 81 plus 1. All right. In the second one, I'll do the first and the last, similar to what I did on the last example. So d is equal to the square root of 10 uh, minus negative 8, or plus 8 squared, plus a 19 minus a negative 2, so plus 2 squared, and... Uh, this is going to give us an 18 squared plus a 21 squared. All right, so 18 squared, hopefully you understand, is 324. 21 squared is 441. So when we combine those together, it looks like we get the square root of 755. Nope, 65, sorry. 65. 
765. Okay. All right, now we've got uh, the second and the third term to do. So d is equal to the square root of... Looks like we've got a uh, 10 minus 1 quantity squared plus a 19 minus negative 1, which is plus 1 quantity squared. This gives us 9 squared, which is 81. This gives us 20 squared, which is 400. So therefore, we've got the square root of 481. Now, we've got three different side lengths here, so our objective is to determine uh, whether or not these three side lengths form a right triangle. So now we have to go and plug them back into the quadratic formula. Big idea that we need to make sure you understand is remember that the longest side always has to be in the C value. Okay, so the square root of 765 is going to be our C. The A and the B don't really matter. So we've got the square root of 82 squared plus the square root of 481 squared equal to the square root of 765 squared. So if this works out, it's a right triangle. All right, the square root and the square cancel, so we've got 82 plus the square root and the square cancel, 481 equal to 765. Okay, and it looks like we're going to fall a little short because this is going to only add up to be what, uh, 563? So 563 does not equal 765. So therefore, nope, not a right triangle. All right, let's go on to the last page. Last part deals with the idea of the uh, midpoint, okay? Midpoint, if you think middle, okay, it's uh, basically found by finding your average. So our formula here is the average of the x's and then the average of the y's. So we add them together and divide by 2. So in the example that is presented, our objective is to determine uh, whether or not the two lines intersect at the same line, making it the midpoint for both. So that's what we're trying to determine, if the two lines bisect each other. We can do this by determining the midpoint. So I'm going to start with this line. All I'm going to do in order to find the midpoint is add the x's together. So 4 plus 6 and divide by 2. Add the y's together, 9 plus 7 and divide by 2. And it looks like the midpoint of this line ends up being 10 divided by 2, which is 5, 16 divided by 2, which is 8. Okay? If I do the same thing with the second line, it looks like I have a midpoint of 3 plus 7 divided by 2, and a 5 plus 11 divided by 2, and that midpoint gives us a 5 comma... Eight as well. So therefore, the two lines do bisect each other because they share the same midpoint. All right, if you have questions on the distance formula or midpoint, bring them to class with you tomorrow.